Hey guys, this is a uh, long plane review for Summer Games 2 on the uh, Amstrad CPC. And we looked at the original game on my uh, previous video. And uh, I think like this, the sequel, I don't think this version was ever released uh, at full price on the Amstrad. All I can find is the uh, Commodore 64 uh, box, as you can see here. Um, certainly can't find uh, the box art for the Amstrad version. So I presume it was uh, never released at full price um, and was just chucked on compilations and eventually re-released on the uh, Kix budget label. be nice if someone can uh, confirm that out there actually. So here we go, here's the opening ceremony. And if you can remember from Summer Games 1, this is absolutely identical. So they very cheekily nicked that and used it on Summer Games 2. But it's pretty good. And uh, some nice music. So, uh, yeah, I don't see why not. Okay, so here we go. Here's the title screen, and it's the usual epic sort of uh, text title screen. I'm going to look at the world records because this is going to be the uh, point of the long play. We're going to try and beat every world record because. Uh, well, there's uh, that's that's the only real point I can see to playing this game because it's just what as if you're just on your own, it's just one player, and uh, there's no targets to sort of get or qualifying uh, scores. So uh, all you can do on your own is try and better better your own uh, records or the computers as we're doing here. Thankfully, this time it's a lot. Um, some of these world records are a lot easier to beat than on uh, Summer Games One. So I pretty quickly did this long play. So onto the first event, the triple, uh, the triple jump. And uh, oh, some nice animation there. In fact, they've used uh, the Mode One uh, graphics. Uh, mode, uh, which means uh, less colours but high resolution and some nice animation. So hop, skip, jump, whee! 14 metres 98. Now the world record was uh, 15.76 we need to beat. So what you need to do here guys, there's no waggling of joysticks, just press fire to uh, start him running and then press the right key to run. When he gets the line, press the right key now and when he, on each on each hop Actually, sorry, you press the right key uh, to jump first, right key again on the uh, first hop, and on the final hop you press left to jump and then press the uh, right key again to push yourself through the air. And yeah, I actually beat the world record there. Let's see if I can do it again. So right key, right key, left, right, and 16 meters 42. There you go. That's the uh, world record. But unfortunately, um, we get a score there, but uh, unlike Summer Games 1, it just moves on to the next event, so we don't get a screen telling us we've beaten the world record and some congratulatory music or whatever. So we'll have to wait to the end of the uh, game to see that. But, okay, on to the rowing. Pretty simple this, just a left and right motion. Um, I'm that the uh, right at the bottom of the screen there. That is me. So you push left and then push right. Um, I believe. Uh, let me just remember this. Yeah. So left sort of picks up your uh, oars and uh, right pushes them through the water. So when that you see your oars just going behind your head, you push the right key pushing through the water. You can pick them up pretty quickly by pressing the left key whenever um, whenever you've initi initiated a uh, push through the water. And uh, yeah, this is pretty easy to beat. Um, the world record for this was 56.1 seconds. And uh, we're already pretty close to the end. So this is a, a very easy world record to break. Once you get the rhythm. And there we go. Absolutely smashed the world record. 26 seconds. And the
the world record is 56 seconds. So there you go. So saying uh, they've used Mode 1 graphics, which is uh, smaller pixels, high resolution, but only four colours on the screen. Um, so we can sort of see uh, the animations a lot better. But I, I would have preferred a chunky uh, Mode Naught with lots of colour, big chunky pixels. I always prefer that, but still, uh, makes a bit of a change from the original game. On to the Javelin. And a um, little bit change here, and um, this time you've got to tap the fire button repeatedly to run. Pull back left to uh, begin throwing your javelin. Now, and then press the right key to throw it when you've got the right angle, which is about 45 degrees roughly. Um, we've got to be 65.44 meters, and again, we've absolutely smashed the world record. 78.52 meters. And strangely, a bit of a sort of a crowd cheering noise here. It only, only ever seems to happen after your first throw of a javelin and the second throw. Other than that, the game's pretty much silent all the way through, apart from a noise you make when you're when you're running and your feet hitting the floor. There you go, and that's that's another good throw. Seventy-eight point seven eight meters, and that's uh, that's even better than my last attempt, and uh, definitely got the world record. Okay, so last try, tapping the fire button, press left when you get to the line as close as possible, uh, then press right to throw it. That's too high of an angle there, really. Shame. But still, I'm going to beat the world record on this, I think. Oh, I've got the same again. 78.78 metres. Perhaps that is the right angle, sorry. Oh well. <laughs> Good stuff. Okay, the next event, equestrian, which is horse riding and jumping over fences and stuff. This is quite an interesting event actually. Ah, it's a real swine to uh, get right. Took me quite a few sort of practice attempts. So you start off and you push up to make your horse run faster and down to make him run slower. But uh, I just keep him running fast all the time. And it's you press the left key, so right key to jump and left key before he lands so you stay on your horse and you want to jump just at the point where you sort of see the uh, like black speckles on the floor there right like now and as soon as you jump you can just hold down the uh, left key for your landing doesn't matter if you're too early as long as, you, as, long, as, long as the left key has been held as you land you won't fall off your horse and that looks pretty, it looks like it's uh, pretty easy, um, but mm, guys, it took a lot of practicing this one actually. And I got a time there of 82.81, um, but we uh, get our sort of score and points tallied on the next uh, screen. And uh, the score to beat was uh, 81, and our final score is 32. And that's uh, again, I've smashed the world record there. I'm not quite sure how we get to 32, but um, that's well, well and truly smashed the high score record. So, okay, we're on to the high jump. Um, I have to say, this was the most tricky of the events to get right. There's a very, very set um, tight timing you have to do here. So, yeah, press fire to start and then right key to run and you can move up and down closer and further away from the pole if you want to then you press uh, fire to jump and then press the up key at the optimum time to send him over the pole but you've got to get that timing absolutely spot on it's literally a kind of uh, speed with like a, the uh, fire button and then the up key and you've got to get it timed on one of his sort of uh, noise Listen to the noise of his feet hitting the floor. The sort of the uh, 
higher pitched of the sounds is where you want to hit the fire button. Ah, brilliant. 1 meter 45 was the world record, so we've done 1 meter 50 there, and uh, that's it, that's the world record smash. So you can hear his feet going click, clop, clip, clop, and you want to go on the clip rather than the clop, <laughs> if that makes sense. So you've got to hit the fire button exactly as his foot lands, and then press the up key and hold it down literally a split second afterwards. But anyway, sod it, we're going to go for the uh, highest height. And listen now. There we go. <laughs> We've got two meters fifty, so absolutely smashed the world record there. And uh, took me ages to work out the timing for this. Um, there's no instructions available for the Amstrad version on the internet. I've seen, so I'm going on the instructions found on the Spectrum World of Spectrum site, which is for the Apple II, which is I think this sli slightly varies. I think it's slightly different for the Amstrad. But anyway, this is uh, onto the fencing, which is the most sort of complicated event with a s silly range of moves available. Um, and you're supposed to be able to defend your, um, so many de defensive and attacking maneuvers, but I just use the same one every time, which is move in, fire and down to do sort of a lunge attack and move forward. And that light flashing there means I've got a hit against my opponent. Five hits and he's done. And I time the fire and down movement by when the shadow of the swords meet. You can see them on the. You can see the shadows on the floor there. So uh, when they get together, do your do your lunging move. Five hits, and that's me won. And we get five thousand points. Uh, and the world record was two thousand points. So again, well and truly smashed it. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I, to most guys, I didn't know what I'm. Do I didn't really know what I was doing in the fencing event. I just knew that I seemed to uh, work out a system of that lunge attack when the uh, sort of shadows of the swords meet each time. So well, I kind of cheated there. Now so, uh, onto the cycling. I'm the uh, bottom cyclist there, and uh, this is a rather strange um, control method. It's sort of a, a circular motion on the joystick. Uh, and you, you really need to have a joystick for this. It's a bit like the uh, 100 meters dash in Summer Games 1. Now I know in the uh, bottom right corner you've got my sort of energy or power bar and next to it is like a rotating sort of arrow and basically you need to sort of follow the uh, direction of the arrow on your joystick. So it's, you can see the arrow is moving around sort of clockwise and I'm uh, following that arrow basically. I seem to get a really good burst of speed when the uh, arrows uh, point in to the right. So I try and have the uh, my joystick move push to the right just before the arrow gets there. And that seems to work quite well as per there. And it seems to sort of spin around rather randomly. Sometimes it spins rather slowly, sometimes rather quickly. But hey, there you go. And we've reached the end of the race. Absolutely thrashed the computer racer. The uh, world record to beat was 59.7 seconds, and again, absolutely smashed it with uh, 25.6 seconds. So uh, yeah, these world records are a lot, lot easier to beat than uh, on Summer Games 1. And uh, well, here we go guys, after this we're on to basically if the final event, which is the uh, kayaking. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I, to be honest, I quite enjoyed this. Um, I think I enjoyed it more than Summer Games 1. Seems to be a little bit better variety, and the world records are not as like ridiculously hard to beat. So I like this more. Um, so this gets a, an overall 7.5 out of 10 from me as a final review score. And so the kayaking. Um, <sighs> Very ungenerous collision detection on this, and very hard to control. But just take your time, you've got plenty of time. It's 6 minutes 20 we've got to beat. 
and yeah you've got to go through the each of the uh, uh, gates D me uh, you can see there's a letter D on the uh, left hand post of the gate there that means a uh, sort of downward gate the next one coming up you will see it says R R6 and that means you're going to reverse through the gate so spin spin myself around the little shady area at the front of my kayak is the front of the kayak there you go so a so simple beam means I've gone through the gate correctly whatever you do do not go back through the same gate twice yeah and it's really easy to sort of hit rocks and get stuck on things it's quite annoying actually this next gate here for you uh, means it's an upstream gate so we need to sort of swim forwards up through it not down it so I've just gone round it and I'm going to go swim up through it there we go and that's that one passed yeah um, controls are <coughs> overall are uh, pretty responsive and good um, quite enjoyed quite uh, some of the, most of the events <coughs> once I mastered the uh, horse riding that was pretty good fun triple jump and javelin is always good oh one thing to mention here there's a reverse gate here which is supposed to go through backwards but it actually fouls and if I go through forwards I get the success uh, beep so that's a bug there guys that reverse gate is actually a downward gate and here we are reaching the uh, finishing line <laughs> it's only a couple of duff events in this really um, fencing is quite a let down it seems like they've put a lot of effort into the fencing event um, but it just doesn't make any sense in the end sadly rowing and cycling are pr uh, pretty similar to each other um, but so so um, yeah kayaking was pretty good though and um, we got a uh, two minutes 20 there and uh, the world record was 620 so we beat that so let's have a look at our world records yay there we go we've got all the world records hurrah but after we got through all the events it uh, just went back to the title screen rather annoyingly and not to the uh, closing ceremony so we have to choose that manually from the menu which is a bit of a letdown but there you go guys I'm going to let you uh, watch and enjoy this no music though but um, yeah, seven and a half out of ten for me. A little bit of a step up from Summer Games one, and I think that's a pretty generous score. Oh, check it out, guys! It's the uh, Jetpack Rocket Man, <coughs> who famously made an entrance at the uh, the uh, Los Angeles Summer Olympic Games in was it 1984? Well, they had the Jetpack Man in the opening ceremony. Well, he appears here in the closing ceremony. And there we go, fireworks. And then eventually a zeppelin or blimp will fly across the sky. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And <clears throat> I'll probably have at least a couple more sort of Olympic-themed games going up soon. All right. Cheers. Bye.